Okay, here we go. This is how I get the two wire harnesses from the gear and the flaps coming from the wing set up. I got I got them tied off with tie wraps so that they won't be so well so loose and running all over the place. And I left enough slack up to the plug. These are the universal wing plugs. Everything from one wing plugs into one box receptacle. Same with the other wing. I left them kind of loose up here because I didn't want to put the actual connections under strain. And I wanted enough slack coming up or length coming up because they're going to have to go through the hole in the fuselage. There's no way to bundle these all up so that these plugs can stay down in this little box area. I mean, you would really be crimping them and straining a lot of wires to do that. Just going to bring them up through. And these will, these ends will obviously connect to the circuit board. So the only thing to plug, plug into the fuselage is going to be these two white plugs. They will plug into the circuit board. So when it comes to taking the wing off, if you have to transport it, which I really hope I don't have to do because I don't, it doesn't really look like it's made to disassemble, although it can. But if you had to, these would be the only two plugs you have to disconnect from the circuit board. And then when you remove the wing, you just feed these wires down through the fuselage. Hopefully we won't have to do that. The fuselage, I remember I was telling you I was going to make some changes in there. I did take those two wires. It's kind of hard to feed them, but I took those two wires that were on the outside and wrapped around the control rods. I brought them across that cross beam there, down into the slot and out from underneath here with the rest of the wires. I, I put some electrical tape up here to hold them down in place so that they won't interfere with the control rods. I neatly tie wrapped the wires that are coming from the aft end of the plane that are going into the circuit board. The wires from the circuit board that are going to be going to the receiver, they're all separate, they're off on the side here. They're not going to get in the way of anything. As well as the EC, uh, ESC wire and the battery cable runs uh, around the outside there. Now the cables that I'm going to run up through with the wing are going to have to come through this little opening. So it can get kind of tight in there. That's why I haven't secured everything in place. We're going to see how those look when they come up through. How much of them will come up through. And then we'll deal with that when we have to. The battery tray of course is going to slide right there. The nice thing about this is you do have access to the... You can see the electronic speed control in there. The battery tray sits on top. And it was easily removable. It's designed to be removed. So everything is accessible. Even if I want to put a tube around that control rod back there for the elevator, because there really is no reinforcement for it, I can do that. I can have access through those two little cooling holes in the fuselage right there where my pointer is. That won't be a big problem. And the other thing is, access to the motor is really nice. See those screw holes to the, or the screw mounts? And wires go underneath that little lip and go right to the speed controller. Changing a motor on this thing looks like it'll be really easy. So, apart from yesterday's little issues with the wing fitting, or the wings going together, which was really, there's no excuse for that being as complicated as it was. It's a bad design with the wing, as far as the molding of the wings themselves. Even though the wings look pristine, un, you know, I had no scratches, no dents on these things. They looked like they came right out of the mold, nice and clean. But they just didn't have a good alignment at the root to allow for a good fitting. And you had to modify that. I, I was unhappy about that. I was unhappy about the... Uh, way this vertical 
fin on this model, as opposed to earlier models, the vertical fin has a little plastic plug with dowel pins that slides up underneath there. And you set that down in here, but you also have to fit it over. There's a dowel pin that comes down, a plastic dowel pin that comes down right in here. And you have to fit it over this uh, elevator interconnect fitting and slide it into place. It was, it was nearly impossible to do. You're supposed to lift the elevator up all the way and try to slide that over. You can see that little cutout. It did not go well. I ended up having to cut that opening back here for the, for the plug and dowel pin. I had to cut that back a little bit at the top to give it some recess to set in so I can clear the elevator interconnect piece and then slide it in place. That's the only way I could do it. So I had to do a little modification with the foam there. Those two things are issues that I really did not like about this. But everything else seems to be going pretty smoothly. All right, everybody. I left off on that last clip uh, explaining how we're going to put the wing on and how we're going to feed the wires for the wing connectors into the fuselage. Now to be honest with you that clip was done several months ago and this plane has been built and it has been flying. <laughs> and I, I never did get around, I meant to, I never did get around to go back and finishing that assembly video. So I am going to do that right now. So I, I didn't break the airplane down completely but I put it back pretty much in the same configuration it was just as I was putting the wings on because that pretty much was the last step I mean there really wasn't much after it except for doing some operational checks and putting on the props and stuff so here we are back where I left off I had the uh, the wings flipped over the other way and I was showing you the the wires for each wing how they plugged into that individual block plug block for each wing and I had kind of tie wrapped them up so they were short and separate for each wing and I said we would feed those up through that square hole in the fuselage but we had not put the wing on when I told you that the next step was going to be explaining the process of putting the wing on and those wires now granted I wouldn't have been able to film and do it at the same time so I was going to have to pretty much install it and then tell you about it anyway so here's the deal when you slide the wing under the fuselage, you get the fuselage on upside down on the, the uh, holder or the, uh, yeah, the model holder. You want to insert the rear of the wing underneath the lip of the intake first. And then you slowly, as you push it in, you'll seat the front of the wing into the fuselage. But you're going to leave it about an inch, or maybe an inch and a half up on the front as you slide the rear underneath the, the leading edge, or not the leading edge, underneath the intake. And through that opening, that inch and a half opening, you're going to have the plugs kind of bundled up right there by the hole. And you might, you can probably start them with your fingers getting the blocks one at a time in. I use a stick like this. I went through the front I position the blocks into the opening in the fuselage and would push it down and as I pushed down some of the the loose wire I had tie wrapped off that was kind of bulged out I'd push it in line with the stick and feed it down through I ended up doing one block at a time because it's hard to squeeze both blocks side by side with that long reach in a stick so I'd, I'd get that one started then I'd push the other block in place and push it through that square hole help its wires that were kind of bulged out sticking out and, and feed them all down through until I got comfortable that all of them were sliding real nicely into the fuselage hole and then I would set the wing in place in the fuselage now you can if you want to go ahead and screw in the the wings to the fuselage I recommend just keeping it seated and flipping the plane over and then getting the rest of your wires taken care of before doing that. 
Okay, I've got the airplane flipped back over, sitting on the table. Of course, i got a blanket on the table to protect things. So we can see down inside how we get the wires run. You can barely see through all these wires the fuselage hole. It's right there to the left of that stick. It's where that square hole is. It's about like that. And what I did was I fed the blocks. These are the two blocks that I fed them up through one at a time. Now if you want to, you can do this many ways. Some people don't bring the blocks all the way up. They keep them in that transitional spot cut out in the fuselage. You can do that, but you end up balling all the wires up in there. It looks like a big snake pit <laughs> full of snakes. It's just not organized. But it does give you room up in the fuselage. I like my wires to be a little bit cleaner than that. So I brought both my blocks up and I used the tape on the back side of those blocks and I taped them into that recess just after that hole in the fuselage. There's a recess right here. And they just fit in that recess, almost flush. The top of the blocks are flush with that recess. And I bring the wires back around, both of them. And the only wires you're bringing back around are the wires that are going to two, the two wires with the white plugs that are going to plug in to the board. But because there's a few excess wires, you know, it loops. I went ahead and I matched them. I married them up with the existing harness that comes from the back of the plane and the servos and the lights and the power for the gear. I just ran them together with those, tied them, tied them together, and then I ran those two cables to the white plugs here. Everything else is already pre-connected. Those are the only two connectors you have to put on. Now you can do as I did and use some tie wraps and make the whole wiring mess kind of clean and organized like I did there. And as I said before, the wires I had going back to these servos and to my receiver, I ended up taping down here because they tended to want to. I could have tie wrapped them all flat, but the receiver, the plugs come up vertical out of that hole and I don't want to bend the wire, so I allowed them to come up a little bit and bend over. And I, then I laid them down as far forward as I could without putting any strain on them, so I used tape for that. And I'll explain the reason for that in just a second. The reason I did that is there's an illusion looking into that fuselage that there's a lot of room. When you look in here, you see a lot of room. And you assume that you can put anything in there. But when you look at the cockpit, and the cockpit tub or well, that does go down quite a ways and it takes up some of that space. It takes up that same space right where that recess is going back to where the receiver is. So I don't have all that room back here with this wiring. I do have to keep it as low as possible for that tub to fit in. You might say, why did I put my receiver way back here? Well, the reason is because I have a tactic, I have a tactic radio system. And a tactic radio system wants to have a tactic receiver. And a tactic receiver is a little bit larger in size. A six channel tactic receiver is larger in size than a spectrum. So you can't fit that receiver in some of the small spots you could a spectrum. Now some people, like I said, they put these wire blocks, wing blocks, down further into the, re uh, the cutout. That would give you room for a small receiver in there and if it had plugs on the side you'd be you'd be fine. My plugs are a little bit different on my receiver so that was the best place I could put it. And, and that works for me and I can get the canopy on just fine but I do have to make sure I protect those wires and keep them as low as possible. I did because I have the receiver way back here out of all your wiring in your airplane that comes in a fuselage, the wire for the that goes from that circuit board to the landing gear part of your receiver. And I can't remember which channel that is, 
but uh, I'm not sure if it's five or six. I think it's five. The wire is not long enough to reach way back there if that's where you put your rec uh, receiver. So if you put your receiver back here, your landing gear wire coming from your circuit board is only going to go to about where the tip of my stick is. It's not going to reach. All the other wires do, but that one. So I did end up going and buying an extension. They're real, you know, they're easy to get at your hobby shop. You can get an extension and just put it in there. It only costs a few bucks. So that's the one additional thing I had to do with the wiring. But once again, that's how I get the wiring routed. So that's all set in place and it's just a matter now of screwing on the wings.